Hi everybody and welcome to the news from the ANU Medical School from today the 3rd of July 2020. So let's get straight into last week's quiz. What I showed you was a picture of oxygen. Uh, when was it discovered and who discovered it? Well that's debatable. Um, a lot of people have been named as the discoverers of oxygen. Amongst them Michael Zendivogius who termed it food of life, Carl Scheele called it fire air, Joseph Priestley deflogisticated air and uh, Antoine Lavoisier called it oxygen. Uh, it has many benefits. As you know, it's responsible for gas transport, metabolism, uh, for the immune system and so on. However, oxygen can also be toxic and hypoxia and oxidative stress disorders uh, are some of the um, adverse effects of oxygen. Congratulations to the winner this uh, week, Riley Attard, who gave me a very detailed answer. And for this week's quiz, I'd like to know uh, what do genes and a cricket bat have in common? Can you tell me who I'm looking for? When whatever that person did, did whatever that person did? And where whatever that person did, did whatever that person did? Send me your emails and announce the winner next week again. Good luck. As you know, the numbers of COVID-19 infections in Victoria are increasing and the rules um, and regulations around travel and what people returning from Victoria have to do change daily. Please ensure that you check the ACT COVID-19 website regularly on updates. At the moment, it is not recommended from anybody from the ACT to travel to Melbourne. Um, it is uh, now clear that our that they're not just certain hotspots or postcodes, but the greater metropolitan area of Melbourne uh, is included in the rules and regulations. If you've been there, greater metropolitan Melbourne area, um, do not visit any health facilities for 14 days. And if you have been in one of the postcode hotspots, you also need to quarantine yourself. Um, the contacts of those people need to remain vigilant and monitor their health. And if they have any symptoms, please uh, contact your GP um, to uh, inquire about testing or go get tested at one of the testing centres. As I said, advice changes daily. I will try to send out information for students and for staff every day, but it's best if you really um, remain vigilant and, and watch the ACT COVID-19 website. So academic promotions uh, for this year are on again. Um, if you're interested or thinking about academic promotion, please discuss this with your supervisor first and see whether your supervisor and you both agree um, that you're ready for promotion. Please let me know as well and uh, send me your CV and your intention to go for academic promotion before the 1st of August because you'll need a supportive letter from me and I'd like to get that um, ready in time. Applications close on the 14th of August and there are lots of information sessions available and um, please see the ANU website for more information. This week's spotlight on teams is on the phase one team. The phase one teaching team has really been instrumental in very quickly transferring all the learning opportunities for our phase one students online. Um, there's a whole group of people um, involved, over 14 of our staff. Um, and uh, we, this has been helped by the TELT team, who over the last three years or so, led by Associate Professor Alex Webb, uh, using Cura Cloud and other modalities, um, already de developed over 200 um, learning opportunities for our students to um, learn online. I would like to particularly thank all the tutors and the coordinators for making this possible. There is more information um, and details of the team and some quotes um, on our website. Just talking about research and emeritus staff. If you think that emeritus staff sit around, have their emeritus title and have a great life, you're wrong. They are still very much involved in research and in teaching as well. And this week, two of our emeritus staff um, uh, professor Julia Potter, who was a professor of pathology and the inaugural um, professor of pathology and uh, associate professor Peter Hickman, who has been involved in teaching since the beginning of the medical school as well, in collaboration with Professor Chris Nolan, have published a paper on gestational diabetes testing and sample handling and how that affects the results. 
bit of an update on the budget. Um, you've heard me talking about the requirement for the university to save $75 million by December this year, and the college has been tasked to save $8.3 million. Uh, this is not against budget, but against um, savings from last year. Uh, Katrina Chapel, the school's manager, and I have finalised the budget and have sent that to the college um, to be sent up to ANU Central. And what Katrina and I are now doing, we're meeting with key staff and discuss with them which of the ideas that they've put forward to us we've taken on and what other ideas there are to save um, budget, to save expenditure or to delay expenditure to next year. Uh, we're expecting a report back from ANU um, in August but all the changes that we have been made, and these are particularly in regards to travel and others, are already in place and uh, we will meet with you and inform you of the details. In the media this week, um, we have Professor Peter Collignon and uh, Associate Professor Sanjaya Sinanayaki, as we've had over the last month or so. But this week, quite um, excitingly, we also had Associate Professor Christina Valtacocci on 2CCA radio talk on photo biomodulation. And one of our recent graduates, Dr. William Maish, who just graduated last year, um, who has also been awarded a teaching award from the university, uh, talked at Chelt on his teaching philosophy. And it's great to see um, our graduates now being involved in our own teaching and research for the school. The after COVID, during COVID webinar um, that ran about two weeks ago now has made a link available. So if you're interested in seeing what was discussed at the webinar, please check the email, the all staff email that uh, got sent out about two days ago. Um, there is a rural pro webinar running on the 13th of the 7th from 7 to 8.45 p.m. And an e-portfolio webinar um, coordinated by the Medical Deans of Australia and New Zealand on the 23rd of the 7th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Please register for these events. The um, Australian Child and Adolescent Trauma Loss and Grief Group led by Nicola Palfrey in combination with UNICEF um, is running a webinar or giving information on navigation of the challenges of parenting. Uh, this is on the 21st of July at 7.30. This is all in terms of updates from me this week. There is a little bit more in the email that came out about two days ago. Uh, please remember to maintain your physical distancing, stay socially in contact, look after yourself, and if you have any ideas, suggestions, please email us at the usual email address. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.